Hello and welcome to this video on how you can bind the receiver to your Express LRS radio. Now this confuses quite a few people and I get lots of questions about it. So I thought I'd do a video aimed at those of you that are relatively new to Express LRS to go through the two different ways. There's been a way that's been around for a long time where you power the receiver three times and then that puts it into bind mode and you can bind it on the radio. Or there's a more modern way, which is the way that I'd probably recommend that you do it now, which is using something called a passphrase. And that is a, like a password that you put on the radio, but also you put on the receiver. And if the radio and the receiver have the same password, you want to think of it like that, then they will talk to each other. There's no need to power cycle the receiver three times. A couple of quick things before we get too far into this. There are some more advanced videos if you already understand all of that stuff I've just talked about. So there's this video here which talks about how you can bind multiple receivers to your radio. Yep, so if you wanted to have lots of PWM style receivers like this, maybe one in the nose that does the main flight controls, one in the rear that does some scale stuff, you can absolutely do that. And I also have videos as well that talks about how to update your receivers and radio if you find that they express LRS versions are out of date. So there are only a couple of things that you need to be aware of and you need to think about if you're having trouble binding. First and foremost is the radio and the receiver have to both be on the same major version. So if this receiver is on Express LRS 3.1, the radio is on Express LRS 3.4, because that both starts with the number three, they'll talk to each other. However, if this was a really old receiver that's on Express LRS 2.1 and this is on 3.4, they won't talk to each other and have to update this receiver to be on a version 3. Point something in order for them to talk to each other. The other common issue is that you have to get the receiver, and you'll see in a moment, it's not always super easy to get things like this powered three times quickly in a way that they recognize and go into bind mode. Sometimes it can take a little bit of finesse. Some are very quick to pick it up. With some, you have to kind of give it a moment to be powered and recognize that that's happened. And that's why doing it with a binding phrase is much easier. And if you can't bind, it could be because the receiver either has the wrong binding phrase, no binding phrase, or you have some other thing going on. So if that kind of stuff is interesting to you and you don't know how all that stuff works, then let's go to the bench. I'll put time codes down below. The first time we'll do it, let's try and bind the old fashioned way without some kind of passphrase where you're going to have to power the receiver three times. And then let me update the receiver with a passphrase, show you how to do that on the radio as well, and show you how easy it is when you set that up. So here is my TX16S. It isn't set up with a binding phrase. I'll show you how all that stuff is. Again, time comes down below. And what I'm going to do to prepare the radio to bind is I'm going to press the system button. I'm going to click on the Express LRS bits. That is then going to show me the screen. And we're now ready to bind. I would just scroll down and select bind on the radio itself. And then we're ready to press go. Now to put any of these receivers that don't use a bind phrase into bind, we have to power it very quickly three times in a row. And this is one of the things that can be a bit tricky. It's easy when this thing's outside the model like this. And I would recommend if ever you're building something, I would actually bind the receiver to the radio first before you stick it in. Because if this is connected to a high power cord, we're using six or eight S, you don't want to be plugging the battery in lots of different times to get this into bind mode. And this is one of the issues with this particular method. However, it's why people develop things like the binding phrase. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to power this from a 5 volt battery eliminated circuit. So this is this kind of um, U-Beck thing. This is an old Hobby King one, but I just need a 5 volt supply. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to power it really quickly three times. So one, two, three. And what we're looking for is the light to flash twice. Now that doesn't look like it's worked. Connected. Okay, it's connected. So it's powered and this is one that's already bound to the radio. So let's do this again. One, Telemetry last. two, three. There we go, we've got it now. So now we've got the double flash it's actually in buy mode. So if it's in buy mode, then all I need to do on the radio is hit the bind key. It'll go into buy mode, it'll find it, and it'll, 
it'll all be working. The radio will tell you that telemetry tree has been recovered. You'll get an LED on here. And that's it, that's binding. Now, obviously there are some major disadvantages to this. First and foremost, of course, is that this, unfortunately, uh, has to be powered three times every time you want to rebind it. Now that's great, and this is the original way that all the binding was done in Express LRS, but that does mean that, you know, if it's buried away in the middle of a model and you can't get to it easily, just powering the model three times can get it to go. However, as you saw, the getting it in the right kind of speed so that it powers, recognizes, and logs that it's been powered three times to go into bind mode can be a bit tricky. So that is one method. Let's try something else. So what we'll do is we'll actually add a bind phrase to this. Now a bind phrase is kind of like your Wi-Fi password at home or in the office. So long as the bind phrase is the same on the receiver and the radio, they will connect together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the radio off. The still connected. We're going to tell it that, that, to turn off anyway. And what we'll do is we'll actually repower this receiver and we're going to leave it powered for about 60 seconds. And what's going to happen, it's going to create a Wi-Fi hotspot. Now this is the same no matter whether or not we're talking about something like this or one of these larger receivers. Again, as I talked about in the introduction, you can bind multiple receivers to the radio using um, either of these methods. You tend to find that as an Express LRS pilot, you'll go for one or the other. A lot of the receivers that you get in bind and fly models will come without a binding phrase, but adding your own binding phrase is relatively quick and easy but we can buy multiple receiver and that can be very handy too. Again, links down below to that. So let me just put that to the side. And what we're doing is we're waiting for the timeout and then we're gonna see this light flash really quickly. And when it does, it's creating a Wi-Fi access point. And we can connect to that on the computer or even our phone, and then we can change all the settings. We can actually add a binding phrase. Now, I would recommend coming up with a binding phrase that's relatively short and sweet, unique to you. The other big tip I would give you on this is when you have start using binding phrases with ExpressLRS, write it down, put it somewhere safe. I would actually write it maybe under the grips on the radio or something so you don't forget. Now, we should now have a Wi-Fi access point. The LED has changed, it's timed out. So here on the computer, I'm gonna go into the Wi-Fi stuff and we should find that we have one called Express LRS RX. Now this is the receiver that we have on the bench creating a Wi-Fi access point. If it asks you for a password, the password is Express LRS all lowercase. So we'll click on connect. And what should happen is it's going to connect to the receiver and then it's going to open the configuration web page. This is something you can do again on a bind and fly. Maybe if you bought the model and it comes with Express LRS receiver in it, but it hasn't got a binding phrase, you just power the model and leave it for 60 seconds and it will create this access point. So down here, we can see all the different pieces. At the moment, the binding phrase is blank. That's why it needs to be powered that three time thing. And we also have the ability to connect it to the home Wi-Fi. Personally, I don't do that. I just like to keep it nice and basic so I can do it whenever it's working. We have the model stuff. We can turn on model match. I would recommend turning on model match if you are going to be using this method because it means that if you accidentally have two models powered, both of which are bound to the radio at the same time, it means that you're not gonna have an issue where they're both going to connect to the radio and talk to the radio at the same time. Because again, as I said, you can have multiple receivers bound at the same time. So I would personally turn that on. And force telemetry off is something that you would turn off on everything but that very first receiver. So if you were binding multiple receivers here to the radio, what I would do would be have the one that's gonna be sending telemetry using telemetry. And on all the others, tick this on so it forces telemetry off. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a binding phrase. So back in options, we're going to add the binding phrase. So I'm gonna put mine in. That is going to create a sequence down here. So this is mine and this is the way, you know, this is the one that I use on my quads. So by putting that in, it kind of is generating this, this sequence of numbers and that has to be the same on the radio as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on save and reboot. 
let's click on reboot and when it comes back then we should have the binding phrase on here so we're just going to wait for that to reboot and when it comes back we should have a binding phrase on it now we can put the binding phrase let's just power that off for the moment we can also put the binding phrase on our radio now this is my um, another radio master radio this one is the one i use that has the binding phrase on it so we'll power it up welcome to htx what we'll do go into the system menu we'll go into express lrs the lua script very similar setup however this time to change the settings in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on Wi-Fi connectivity and I'm going to enable Wi-Fi. Now that means now that the Express LRS stuff in here will be creating an access point in the same way. So if we jump back onto the computer, have a look at our Wi-Fi access points again. Oh, there we go. We now have our Express LRS TX. We'll click on that and connect. Again, if it asks for a password, the password is Express LRS, all lowercase, no spaces. Let's click connect. Now it's going to connect up and now we're going to actually be looking at the settings here on the radio. Very, very similar looking to the stuff that we've just played with on here. I've already done my binding phrase. It's already been added and that's auto generated the same sequence of numbers. So we know that that's the case. So now on the radio, let's uh, turn the Wi-Fi off because we don't want that. And to bind is going to be super simple in here. What we're going to do, we're going to go back into the Express LRS bits and pieces. We're going to go down to bind just like we did before. But this time we don't have to do that wacky powering three times malarkey. So all we have to do now to bind is just plug in the receiver and power it. Go into the same place on the radio as we did before. Go down to bind and hit the bind button it'll say binding and there we are we are bound again so this time as i come out we'll see that i've bound i haven't had to do any of the messing around if i try now to turn the radio off receiver still connected it'll tell me the receiver's connected i've got the little uh, symbols here showing me the signal strength so that's the two ways to do it now what the advantage is well if you have a receiver like this that is brand new it won't be coming with your binding phrase so you're going to have so you're going to have to connect it via the way that we've done it i just leave it powered for 60 seconds connect to it on the computer put your bind phrase in and then to bind it to your radio is that simple and that quick personally i would recommend if you're using the old school method of powering it three times although that absolutely still will work and I still have a radio set up for that for some of the stuff that I play with here that I don't want to mess around with the receivers too much with, then I would personally change from the old school way of doing it and add your bind phrase. Personally though, I would recommend turning on model match. That just guarantees that you're always connected and that you have the right model on your radio for the right model that this thing's plugged into. So hopefully that's been helpful for those of you that have been interested in how this works. Again, links down below to my video on binding multiple receivers and also my videos on how to update the receivers if it's not on the same version. Even though this is an older receiver on version 3.0, this is probably 3.4, they are talking to each other and that's because they're in on the same major version. If you can't bind, more often than not, that's the main reason and it's time to update your radio or your receivers. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.